Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Now, on a milligram to milligram basis, right? So comparing uh, dose per dose, look at how much more powerful like, this one is compared to the testosterone group. And again, this is on a per milligram basis. Now, does that mean that like, testosterone, which is natural, by the way, uh, is more anabolic and more powerful than testosterone? Well, let's find out. Now, again, this is another episode of Testosterone Thursday. Today's Thursday, so obviously we're discussing testosterone as usual. And lately, I've been bombarded with questions on testosterone and turkisterone. So pretty much like this one has hijacked the Testosterone Thursday series. But anyway, let's bring out the Vegeta Scouter as usual. This is what we're analyzing. So I'm picking two different studies here, right? So we're picking the famous classic uh, study from Basin in 96 where he's pretty much uh, comparing the effect of testosterone uh, at high and low dosages versus the effects of training natty, right? So that's the study that I, I've covered it several times where you have the natty group and you have the enhanced group and he pretty much wanted to see uh, what the difference in gains would be. So I'm using that study where they're obviously using testosterone. We're going to focus on a group that took 600 milligrams of testosterone, right? The very, very, very high uh, dose group. And then we're going to compare it to the study that I've covered last time from Eisenman, right? Which is the best study done, like, done on like testosterone on humans uh, to date, where they obviously administered uh, ectosterone. Now, remember on this study that we're giving, uh, I'm using the low dose group, right? So that took 12 milligrams of ectosterone per day. It was supposed to be more, but again, watch the video that I made on it. I go into details. So they got 12 milligrams of ectosterone per day, uh, which comes out to 84 milligrams per week. Uh, compared to this group, which took 600 milligrams of testosterone per week. Now, first, if you look at the bench press gains compared to the placebo, remember, we got to compare the gains uh, to the placebo group, right? We can't just look at the gains from study one and compare it to gains study two, right? Because there's obviously differences in design and things like that. So we're just looking at uh, the gains compared to each study's placebo group, right? So the testosterone group, they gain over 26 more pounds on their bench press, right, compared to the placebo group, right? So they added 26 pounds to the bench press more than the placebo group, right? The, the, obviously, the total gain was more than that. On the ectosterone group, they've added about 13 pounds more uh, than the placebo group, right? So at first, it looks like testosterone is the clear winner, right? I mean, 26 pounds more compared to thir 13 pounds more than, than each uh, a placebo group but remember the testosterone group was taking 600 milligrams of test a week that's a lot right again compared to 84 milligrams of uh of ecdysterone so even if you factor out the weight of the ester that's still a substantial difference right you're looking at about 420 milligrams uh of testosterone compared to 84 milligrams of ecdysterone right if you remove the testosterone ester so they're using five to seven times more again on a milligram to milligram basis right than this group for just double the results. So again, five to six times more as far as dose is concerned. Obviously, they're not the same compound, but you know what I mean, right? So five to six times more, right, uh, to get about double the gains, not to mention all the side effects that come with using such a high amount of uh, testosterone. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? So once you equate the dose, right, so once you make it on a milligram per milligram basis, the ecdysterone group destroys the testosterone group uh, when it comes to uh, relative gains, right? I mean, look at the difference from here to here. Ecdysterone is no fucking joke, guys. I've been telling you guys for over nine years now. Eat your spinach, eat your quinoa. So once again, now you see why why I put ecdysterone on the monitoring program. Again, watch the previous video that I made on it for more details. But they were not crazy. Remember, they're the ones who funded the study, right? They're the ones who funded the study uh, from Eisenman. And after the results came out, they were like, holy fuck. You know, keep in mind, like I said, like, this one's been around for decades. It's just we never really had uh, well-designed studies on humans until the Eisenman study. And that's when what I was like, fuck it. You know, we got to put this bitch on the monitoring program. It just has way, way too many effects, right? Again, in the last video, I went over the anabolic effects, right? The effect on strength, protein synthesis, insulin sensitivity, recovery, blah, blah, blah. But it has so many more. If you guys want, I could make more and more videos on the rest of the effects of a distal one. I mean, there's, there's so much research on it. You know, it's been studied extensively, even outside of the bodybuilding space. Remember, WADA would not put something on a monitoring program for no reason, right? There hasn't been a single anabolic agent on it for what? I think it was like over 10 years or something like that. But the reason why they haven't been it yet is they're probably waiting for more studies. You know, someone else needs to replicate the Eisenman study and see what we find out. 
Now, which is stronger? Does that mean that ecdisterone is stronger than testosterone? Not necessarily, right? It depends because and I'm pretty sure if you take 600 milligrams of ecdisterone, you're not going to get the same results as the group who got 600 milligrams of test, right? It just doesn't work like that. It's just ecdisterone is much more powerful than testosterone at low doses, right? So if you're taking a low dose of ecdisterone, which again, like I said, you don't need a lot to see gains, you know, something like 12 to 30 milligrams a day, which is easily found in uh, quinoa and spinach. And fuck you guys, I'm not saying quinoa. That shit sounds stupid as fuck. But anyway... Uh, if you're getting low doses of, uh, of ecdisterone, uh, you're getting more bang for your buck compared to low doses of testosterone. But obviously, if you go into the high doses, uh, testosterone is king, of course. But testosterone comes with side effects, whereas ecdisterone does not. Remember, ecdisterone, there's virtually zero, zero side effects on animals and on humans. No liver toxicity, no acne, no hair loss. No uh, issues with your blood lipids, no testosterone suppression, none of that, right? And it's natural. Whereas testosterone at high dosages comes with a fuck ton of issues. Again, depending on your genetics and things like that, how you respond to it, right? So which is stronger? Again, at high doses, testosterone is king, whereas at low doses, uh, ecdisterone is king, right? And again, ecdisterone tends to have this weird effect where as you keep increasing the, the doses, you're not getting... Uh, a stronger and stronger effect. It's, you know, it's kind of weird, which is why we need more studies uh, to follow up on the Eisenman study. Because if you remember in the last video, the group who had four times the amount of ecdisterone as the 12 milligram group did not see uh, substantially more gain. So it seems like ecdisterone tends to peak after you reach a certain amount, which is probably around the 30 milligram per day dose. Whereas testosterone, obviously, you know, you keep on making more gains as you increase the dose up to a limit, of course. So conclusion, uh, testosterone wins at high doses and ecdisterone wins at low doses, right? And when you look at pros and cons and side effects, then ecdisterone wins by far. And that's mainly because, like I explained before, ecdisterone mainly works through the estrogen beta receptor, whereas testosterone uh, not only works through the androgen receptor, but through many other pathways, even outside of uh, DNA binding. So long term, the androgen receptor is just way more anabolic. Uh, than the estrogen beta receptor, again, long-term and at high doses. Now, another question I get a lot is, Megan, should I buy Turkisserone from Derek at more place, more dates? So I recently found out that he actually sells Turkisserone, which is pretty fucking badass, because, like I mentioned several times, it's very, very hard to get your hands on on uh, Turkisserone, the right stuff, especially if you're trying to get it from foods. Forget it. So if he was able to uh, make a legit Turkisserone supplement, then kudos to him. Now, as far as whether you should buy a Turkisserone supplement... I might make a whole video on that, right? Because usually my answer is always hell no, but that's mainly because I don't trust most supplement companies, right? And from watching his review of my video, he seems like a pretty honest guy. He was objective, science-based, and even he was skeptical about most supplement companies, right? So I would say, you know, it's up to you guys. As um, long as it's legit, I don't see why not. I personally like to stay away, but that's for my own personal reasons. Like I said, one, uh, I like to know exactly what's in most of the products that I use. Uh, and two, like I mentioned before, we just don't have a lot of human data on uh, turkisterone. We just know that in animal models, it's uh, more anabolic. And I would assume it's also more anabolic in humans. I don't see why not. Uh, we just need more studies and we just need more data on it. In fact, I would be so excited if we finally get some uh, well-designed studies on the effects of turkisterone. Because I've been waiting for that for years. But anyway, like I said, I'll make a whole video on Turkisterone eventually. You know, it's pretty much like this, the one on crack, right? Just about 20% stronger and pretty much the exact same effects. All right, let's say, guys. Let me know what you want me to go over in the next episode of Testosterone Thursday. See you in the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.